You guys are uh, you guys are doing real good as an audience, yeah. just in general. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that like this, you guys as individuals have never been together as an audience before. You guys are killing it. <laughs> I mean, you guys are pretty good. Um, I think that if you guys were just this much better, you guys could go to regionals. Um, <laughs> let's make it happen. Now I'm gonna try to get my hair out of my face. You guys enjoy. Halloween, uh, you guys have a good Halloween. Um, I had a pretty good Halloween too. I love Halloween, it's my favorite holiday. The only thing that sucks is that there's not a lot of options uh, for costumes when you look like I do. There's Predator. I got a bigger laugh than I wanted it to. There's Predator, uh, there's Sideshow Bob. <laughs> Rep. Um, but I was really last minute this year and I didn't know what to do. Um, so I grabbed my guitar and I, I was going to this party and I just walked in with a guitar and I told everyone that I was Tracy Chapman. <laughs> if you don't know who Tracy Chapman is, just imagine we'll be going to work with a guitar. That's all that is. Um, usually every year I tell my friends that I'm going to dress up like Waldo from the Where's Waldo books. My only problem is I don't look like Waldo either. So every year I end up dressing like someone designed to distract you from Waldo. <laughs> and at parties, people are like, hey, aren't you... Never mind. <laughs> He's around here somewhere. <laughs> Generally speaking, I like white people. I just want to put this information out there so you guys are on board for the next couple sentences. <laughs> Whenever I'm out and I see like groups of eight or more white people, I get suspicious. <laughs> this is Los Angeles. You're gonna tell me you don't even have work friends that are like different colors? Because at this point, you're avoiding them on purpose. <laughs> and this is this is why she just went, oh shit! <laughs> Talk some truth right here. <laughs> and the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, two days ago I was at a bar with a group of my friends, and uh, behind us there was this very loud group of like ten like Caucasian. Uh, people. Um, and out of nowhere, very loudly, they went, <laughs> And it didn't offend me that they were singing songs from The Lion King. What did offend me is that throughout it, not even one of them glanced in my direction, just to check in, you know? <laughs> just to be like, keep going. <laughs> Guys, I'm in a good mood. Um, I'm in a new relationship. I'm pretty right. happy about that. I'm actually, in a, I'm actually in an interracial relationship. I'm an African-American, and uh, my girlfriend, she's an imaginary American. <laughs> Things are going great. Um, my ex-girlfriend uh, actually does have a tangible uh, relationship. Uh, I'm happy for her though. Like, I'm, I'm happy that she has found someone who she has things in common with. Things like bike riding, or watching foreign films, or being a lesbian. Because there's just some things that I couldn't provide for her, like eating out, or going to expensive restaurants. That was a that was a that was an oral joke. It's an oral joke. But my ex girlfriend is 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 bisexual and now she's a lesbian. And I asked her why she was attracted to me in the first place, and she said it was because I have a slender frame, which is like saying that my body is strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. <laughs> It's, 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 it's nice that you can laugh at that, because <laughs> I can't. Um, 
I think it's my fault. I'm attracted to androgynous haircuts and jean jackets. <laughs> just, just look at me. I'm a lesbian in a man's body. This is what I get. Um, uh, I am a, I am not a very good black person. In, in general, I've been um, I'm I'm kind of nerdy. Um, I've been reading these psychology books lately. If you guys are familiar with like Sigmund Freud's like three distinctions of the personality, it's like there's like the id, the ego, and the superego. There's like the instinctual self. There's the you know the intellect, the rational self, and there's like the moral self. Um, I think personally, like my intellectual, I mean like my instinctual self uh, would be Kunta Kente from Roots, the miniseries. Uh, my rational self would be uh, Jordi Laforge from Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> and my moral self would just be LeVar Burton reading children's books. <laughs> because children's literacy is important, guys. <laughs> Let's think about the future of America together. Are you guys gonna vote? All right, I'm not gonna go on a tangent. Um, but if I were alive in the 1960s, I'd definitely be a member of the Black Panther Party, but I'd probably be like an unpaid intern, like, like fetching coffee for like the badass members of the Black Panther Party. But it'd be like an easy job though, because they don't take cream or sugar. <laughs> you guys got that too? Awesome. <laughs> First time I tried that shit. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I also think that it's weird um, that the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People won't advance past calling us colored people. <laughs> I don't even want your scholarship if you're going to be a dick about it. <laughs> um, I also, I like, I like modern rap, I don't know, I don't, I like rap music, I just don't like, like the top 40 stuff. I don't, because once rappers get enough money, they just start morphing into Republicans, and here's why. Because <laughs> all they care about is evading taxes, buying boats, and limiting the choices that women can make. Oh. <laughs> I just expected you to be like, oh shit, real. <laughs> um, I've never done a 10 minute set before, so. I'm forgetful is, is the point that I'm making. But if I were a famous rapper, um, Eventually, I would write an autobiography, and it would be called, You Don't Know Me! <laughs> a memoir by Brody Reed. <laughs> also known as uh, Chillionaire. <laughs> my, I think my, my rap name would be Chillionaire, because I, I like make a million dollars from rapping, but I'd be cool about it. Like, I'd, be, I'd still be the same guy. And my first album could be called Terminal Chillness. <laughs> Um, I really like, let's see, my sister, she's pregnant right now, and she asked me if I think it's okay if she smokes weed during her pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, are you insane? You can't smoke marijuana when you're pregnant. What if your baby comes out really cool? <laughs> playing jazz songs on his Fisher Price all night. <laughs> Inviting his friends over to get stoned and watch Yo Gabba Gabba. You don't want that. That's what I do. <laughs> but addiction does run in my family pretty bad. Um, actually, when I was a kid, I was addicted to Flintstones once a day vitamins. <laughs> vitamins aren't a joke, you guys. It got really bad, actually. They had to send me away after I hit that rock bottom. <laughs>